Sad news today, December 3rd. Yesterday, we lost Star Trek giant DC Fontana. She passed away peacefully at the age of 80, reportedly after a short illness. As a young girl of 11, Dorothy Catherine Fontana decided she wanted to become a novelist. After getting an associate degree as an executive secretarial major at Fairleigh Dickinson University, she worked her way up through the typing pool to quickly become the secretary to Samuel Peoples of Screen Gems, then to producer Del Reisman of The Lieutenant, where she met and became secretary to that show's creator, Gene Roddenberry. Roddenberry encouraged her writing, and in 1964 she published her first novel, a western, Brazos River. After The Lieutenant was canceled, Roddenberry started work on Star Trek, and Fontana came with him, as she worked on it since the beginning of development. Associate producer Robert H. Justman encouraged Roddenberry to give her more writing tasks, and Roddenberry assigned her the job of writing the teleplay for an idea he had called The Day Charlie Became God, the premise of which she wrote into her reworked script for the episode that became Charlie X. Other original series episodes she had a hand in writing or rewriting, Tomorrow is Yesterday, This Side of Paradise, Friday's Child, Journey to Babel, By Any Other Name, The Ultimate Computer, The Enterprise Incident, That Which Survives, The Way to Eden, among others. When Steve Karabatsis, the story editor, left the production midway through the first season, she became the new story editor, instead of Roddenberry's secretary. At the age of 27, Fontana was the youngest story editor in Hollywood at the time, and also one of the few female staff writers. She remained story editor until the end of the second season. In an interview, she said, I had told Gene Roddenberry that I did not wish to continue on Star Trek as story editor because I wanted to freelance and write for other series. I did, however, want to continue to do scripts for Star Trek. Gene was agreeable to this, and I was given a contract in February of 1968, which called for a guarantee of three scripts, with an option for three more. Whenever anyone has asked why I chose to leave Star Trek story editorship, I have always given this reply. But it should be noted, Fontana was pretty unhappy with the rewrites done on some of her season three scripts, including The Enterprise Incident and The Way to Eden, which was originally submitted as Joanna, which was featuring Dr. McCoy's daughter. She had previously noted how unhappy she was with the way Roddenberry rewrote the episodes they wrote together. She used the pseudonym J. Michael Bingham for The Naked Now, as she was especially unhappy with that episode. One of Fontana's other big contributions to the original series was her discovery and introduction to Gene Roddenberry of costume designer William Ware Thies. She was also an active contributor to the officially endorsed fanzine Inside Star Trek. She conducted interviews with several key production staffers, most notably the one with these, the only published one on record. Now, over the years, she did maintain a working relationship with Roddenberry. She served as his assistant on the Quester tapes. She worked on Genesis 2. She was hired as a story editor and associate producer on Star Trek The Animated Series and wrote Yesteryear, which is arguably the best episode of that series. She would also work on The Fantastic Journey, Logan's Run, Six Million Dollar Man, Buck Rogers of the 25th Century, The Waltons, and finally back to Star Trek, where she worked up the initial concept for the first episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Encounter at Farpoint. She earned a Hugo Award nomination, co-invented the Lacars concept, and wrote four other episodes of the season, The Naked Now, Lonely Among Us, Too Short a Season, and Heart of Glory, before leaving, uh, along with all the other original series production staff, uh, due to the meddlings of Roddenberry's lawyer, Leonard Mazelish. She did uh, return a short time later uh, and wrote the Deep Space Nine episode Dax, which would be her last involvement with quote-unquote canon Star Trek. And she actually fleshed out a ton of Jadzia Dax's backstory. She would go on to write for Babylon 5, Earth Final Conflict, and she also wrote a bunch of video games. Star Trek Secret of Vulcan Fury, which was an unreleased game, unfortunately. Uh, Star Trek Bridge Commander, Star Trek Legacy, Star Trek Tactical Assault, all with Derek Chester. And she did an episode of the uh, fan production, Star Trek New Voyages, the episode To Serve All My Days. She worked with Jack Trevino and Ethan H. Koch on that. And that was the episode that Walter Keening starred in, and it was, a, gosh, a very touching episode. Like, uh, it's a fan production, but it made me cry. She also wrote the novel Vulcan's Glory. She wrote the IDW comic book Star Trek Year 4, The Enterprise Experiment. Leonard Nimoy has credited her for expanding Vulcan culture within Star Trek. She basically created Sarek, Amanda, and Spock's relationship with his parents. Spock's entire backstory in yesteryear on the anime series. As Star Trek fans, we owe a tremendous debt to DC Fontana. Without her, Star Trek 
probably wouldn't have been as successful as it ultimately was. If you doubt that, you need to realize that Gene Roddenberry understood it himself. That's why he kept asking her back and making her story editor and associate producer. She got it. She got it enough to craft integral backstories uh, for time-tested fictional characters and cultures. Total badass, total trailblazer for other women. At the time of her death, she was working as a senior lecturer at the American Film Institute, where she mentored aspiring screenwriters, producers, and directors. She's survived by her husband, Oscar-winning visual effects cinematographer Dennis Skodak, and her family has asked for memorial donations to be made to the Humane Society, Best Friends Animal Society, or to the American Film Institute. Until next time, go watch or read something DC Fontana had a hand in, and do like Dorothy. Live long. Prosper.